When it comes to certifications in technology, there really are only five that you need. And there are a lot of people out there that kind of treat certifications like Pokemons. They want to catch them all. When in reality, nobody needs to have a ton of certifications, right? Experience is always going to be more valuable. But the point that a lot of people want to do, especially when they're beginners, is that they want to have a certification to prove that they actually have some form of knowledge, which is great, especially if you're a beginner. But I think people sometimes choose the wrong idea on what certifications they should chase. So what I want to go through with you today is the only five certifications that you would ever need in your entire technology career. Anything extra is really just a bonus and people that pursue them, one, either like certifications or two, they're finally within the industry and their employer gives them an incentive to take these certifications. Now that incentive could be a bonus, it could be a pay rise, it could go towards their annual review. So if you do see people gaining a lot of certifications, don't take that to make you think that you're some sort of imposter because you aren't. That's really the only real reason why people take them once they're in industry. For example, like myself, I got a £4,000 pay rise for passing the HashiCorp Terraform Associate, and I also got a £200 bonus at the same time just for passing that exam for one previous company I worked at. And I've also never paid for any certifications or any training. The employer has provided that to me, which is a different case for people that are trying to get into the industry. You actually have to fund it yourself. So let's drive straight into the first certification that I want to talk about, which is kind of the gold standard for people trying to enter technology without any experience, which is CompTIA A+. I still recommend this to everybody. It's a little bit costly. It's going to cost you a few hundred dollars, but ultimately it gives you a very good baseline on what you actually need to know. It's going to teach you about operating systems, databases, support, virtualization, you know, all of these concepts of computing that the average person has no idea about. You're going to learn that from taking the course and passing that certification. And it really isn't unheard of for people to take this and land a service desk job. Because let's face it, the service desk, as long as you can use a computer like 10% better than an, an end user, you probably get hired. And if you've got something like a certification to push you forward into the interview stage, that's obviously always going to benefit you. The next one may be kind of controversial and I'm going down the networking route. Most people always ask the same question. Do I need CCNA? It is the most popular question I always get. Do I need CCNA for this? Do I need it for that? People ask me if they need it to become a cloud engineer, which is kind of my area of, of expertise where I focus, cloud engineering and DevOps. And the answer is absolutely not. I did CCNA back in college and it was very hard, especially for someone who didn't have any experience, but I, I did it because it was free. Even though it's an associate level certification, it isn't easy. Network networking is not a particularly easy topic, especially for someone who's new to the game. Now myself, who works in cloud computing, I haven't touched a Cisco product in years and I haven't touched one within the cloud either. The only time I've used a third party tool within the cloud, it would be something like F5 or Palo Alto. Now, do you need the CCNA? I probably would still recommend going with the CompTIA Network Plus. The reason for that is it, unless you're intending to go into a network engineering job or you're going to be working for a company where they're actually using Cisco products, do you really need it? I think CCNA has always had this gold standard back in the day from on-prem days which I don't think particularly is relevant anymore. Like if you were to pursue a job in cloud, for example, whether it's AWS or Azure, both of the cloud providers have their own networking certification because networking in cloud versus on-prem is very different. The next domain that I want to focus on is going to be security. And the reason for that is because there are so many different security frameworks to work to. Now, if I was going to recommend any of these certifications to anyone, it would be CISSP. But the reason I can't recommend that, especially to a large majority of my audience who are new to technology or trying to get into it, is that CISSP has prerequisites. You actually need to have worked within a security role in order to take that exam. Whereas if you take something like the CompTIA Security Plus, there are none of those prerequisites for you need to be working in industry. So, so far there, I've recommended the first three of these certifications are all CompTIA based. This is absolutely not sponsored, I promise you of that. I personally just think these are probably the best certifications for people to go for because you cover all three domains. You know, you got your computing fundamentals, your networking, and your security. Now, the only certifications after that that I recommend is gonna be cloud-based ones, and these are gonna be for the cloud providers, whether that's AWS, Azure, or GCP. The two main ones that I recommend are based on AWS and Azure. The reason I don't recommend the Google one is not many people use it and where I live in the UK, Azure is very popular amongst enterprise organizations. The government have won contracts with Microsoft, so there's a lot of Azure push over there. AWS is also very popular. 
Now I only recommend one from each. On the AWS side, I recommend the Solutions Architect Associate. On the Azure side, I recommend the Azure Administrator. These are exactly the same equivalent exams on either side. I think AWS probably shouldn't have named this one Solutions Architect Associate because realistically, it doesn't make you a Solutions Architect. It's very much an engineering exam. You may be thinking, well, what about the Cloud Practitioner or what about the Azure Fundamentals certification? And you know, like I do have the AZ900, the Azure Fundamentals, and would I recommend it to someone? Probably not. The reason I took it was because the company I was working for at the time had some spare certification tokens laying around, so the exam was free. It did help me secure a cloud job, but I was already experienced at the time working in on-prem engineering. The reason I don't particularly recommend it is that you don't actually learn anything. It's called a fundamentals for a reason. It's one of those exams where sales guys will take it because they need to understand some stuff about what services cloud providers provide. You know, even recruiters are taking it nowadays because they want to understand more about the technology when they're talking to people about being hired. For example, if you were to dedicate like four weeks to doing AWS Cloud Practitioner or Azure Fundamentals, I can guarantee you in half of that time, if you dedicated that to the Azure Administrator or the Solutions Architect Associate, you would learn more about what you actually do within a job and about the technology, especially if you've already done something like Comtia Plus prior. Now, if you do want to ease your way in, I don't recommend you actually do the certification, just do the learning. The course material is online, it's free, it's on Microsoft Learn, it's on the AWS training website, and you can just go through the course. You don't have to do the certification. If that's how you want to ease your way into a cloud provider, I honestly, I recommend that. Once you've done that, jump straight over to the next level on the administrator or the solutions architect, do the learning, then do the certification. If you are completely new to cloud and you want to jump into those certification areas, I highly recommend you get some hands-on experience because they are not easy exams. I personally don't hold either of them. You know, where I'm at in my career, I don't need to because I have the experience to back up my knowledge. I did take AZ-104, which is the Azure Administrator, without any practice at all. And the reason I took that exam was primarily because, again, the company I was working for had a free token. It had to be used. So I booked the exam, took it the next day, and I got 66% without studying at all. And this was very early on in my cloud journey. You know, this was only after about four, three or four months working in cloud. Uh, the reason I was able to score quite high with no revision early on was mainly down to my prior knowledge. You know, a lot of the questions are based on networking, virtual machines. It's just understanding the naming conventions and how they do things in cloud. And if you are interested in a cloud engineering or DevOps, for example, I have released an ebook, which is down in the description, which is only $12. It covers every single topic that you need to know, how to study for it, where to go find the resources. It's kind of like a little handbook for you guys to always refer back to. I also think you should be very cautious of people online that are telling you to take certifications because Certification videos on YouTube tend to do pretty well because people are really interested in taking certs and getting into the industry. And a lot of people on here are recommending people to do such ridiculous certifications that don't even matter. Like I saw one guy the other day saying, you need to have AWS security badge. You're not gonna get a job in security without this, which is just absolutely ridiculous. Like previous company I worked at was cybersecurity and we were using AWS as our main cloud provider. Do I have that certification? No, I don't, I just have experience. And I think as well, like people that tell you you're gonna end up being paid more money just for having certifications is absolute BS. You aren't gonna be paid more money just based on loan on salary. Okay, fair enough, you may get a bonus if your company offers it for you to pass in that certification, but actually being paid more money in general just for having passed an exam is completely mythical. It is not true. So there you have it. Those are the five certifications that I recommend. They cover multiple domains of course general computing networking security and cloud are the only certifications i'd recommend to anyone in the world if you wanted to get into technology into an engineering role as always thank you all very much for watching don't forget to hit that subscribe button